the user of your website should be at the center of the plan since it is the user to who you want to offer your information or your products it is very important that you design a site which is easy to understand easy to navigate logical in orientation fun to use and well it should have something to offer thus you should make sure that users will spend some time browsing through your pages and after all buy the site's products or learn something from it so for this reason we will look at two things in this second e -le lecture about planning a website first of all we look at the user and then we will deal with aspects of content development so let's start with the user and look at some central physical prerequisites certain elements in human perception and memory are important for web publishing for example we have to take into account visual perception visual perception follows certain laws the so-called gestalt laws these are to be followed in all phases of the graphics design process also one has to be aware of the fact that visual perception is sometimes perceivable now, some of you might know this example here where you have several types of visual deception just look at them and you will remember now auditory perception becomes important when your site requires a lot of sound low compression rates can make spoken passages or music unpleasant and finally we have the memory factor memory is not a less important factor for web design at all how often have you found yourself lost in hyperspace because you could not remember where you started browsing we will not look at these aspects here in detail further e-lectures and further virtual sessions on the virtual linguistics campus on human perception and memory will provide you with the details but let's look at the general expectation a user might have different groups of users will of course have different expectations and will expect different things from your website take for example a university homepage this is a screenshot of my university's homepage recorded today students who want to start their studies at this university might want to find out more about the university itself so they're interested in this portion of the website and they want to find out for example the latest news of their departments when their next assignments will be due and maybe what the next date of an upcoming party is scientists or staff members have different expectations they want to know about certain developments in the university structure they might be interested in the telephone numbers of colleagues and well they might be interested even if the publication list of one of their colleagues is longer than their own one setting the site's objectives might help to know more about the expectations of users and can become an extensive field how can we motivate users to use a website well users want a site which is fun to use this might be a simplification of complex issues but after all this is what keeps users on your website there are several elements that can motivate users to dwell on a site and make them come back a site should be easy to read it should contain short texts containing important information for the user a site should have a pleasant and logical design a website should be permanently maintained the content should be constantly updated and then of course the site should give something other sites cannot provide so by and large it is the content that attracts the user 
So let's look at content management next. Now, the main areas of content management can roughly be divided into four central fields, which you can see here in more or less chronological order. For example, we will have to ask the question, what kind of content and services will a website have to contain? Or we have to address the topic of navigation. Designing navigation and orientation elements is the task of the graphic designer. During and after the development of a site, testing and evaluation is important for the site's success. And then we have to sh make sure, under the heading of maintenance, that a site should be updated and renewed from time to time. Let's look at information first. Those in a website team responsible for the content of a website will have to deal with questions concerning the organization, the mapping and the linking of the information on the site. So information architecture, as some publications call it, on the web is different from other media, since the web allows a structure which is not as linear as it is in a book, for example. This means that texts which were taken from books have to be rewritten to be fit for the requirements of on-screen reading and hypertext structure. Also, there are legal issues that come in. They come into play when one develops content from pre-given texts. If a text is developed by a writer from your own team and thus an original text, it is not safe on the web and it's not safe from other writers so you have to protect it perhaps by means of a password. The success of a website is to a large extent dependent on whether it can be handled easily. Navigation is the key word here. A user will always want to know where he or she is, so elements of orientation should be visible all the time. The user also wants to know how to get a piece of information as quickly as possible. Thus, a website should always include some sort of sitemap. This is the sitemap taken from a virtual session. Or alternative navigation elements such as the little arrow, that we use in our virtual session menus on the Virtual Linguistics Campus. The user of a website is not only important before you start the design process but also during and after the development of a site. Technical issues tend to change over time. For example, browsers quickly become outdated. Moreover, the technical knowledge of the users will improve while using the web. This doesn't mean that you can use cutting-edge technology because the user will get used to it sometime. What it means is that you will have to interview your focus group to learn more about technical and other knowledge of your users. Evaluation and testing also means that you eliminate errors, technical errors as well as content errors. Even a thorough planning of these things does not prevent us from mistakes slipping in. And finally, a website has to be maintained. So maintenance is an important issue when it comes to motivating your user to return to the site. Websites which are not regularly updated or renewed tend to become uninteresting and even boring. Who wants to read news from last year when other sites have news from today? Well, two groups of website team members come into play in website maintenance, namely those responsible for the technical support of content development and those responsible for content development themselves. Both groups should work hand in hand, for example by developing templates which can be updated every day or creating dynamic content which updates automatically. In our two e-lectures, planning a website part one and this one here, 
planning a website part 2 we have shown that website development is a complex enterprise. It requires a complex team effort where all team members must work hand in hand. We have shown that detailed planning and clear-cut competencies are fundamental to web development. One thing was not shown. Every website development team must have a positive and cooperative team spirit. But I can assure you, the team behind the Virtual Linguistics Campus, the Linguistic Engineering Team, has exactly that.